Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. Um, I have no adjustments to the agenda. Chris, do you have anything? I don't know that this is necessarily an adjustment to the agenda. I do have um, a bid specs for a bid that's going to go out for um, a uh, uh, to purchase some um, technology. And I'm going to share that with you. Um, I don't think that there is a policy that requires boards to approve bid specs before they go out. You certainly get to decide on the bids when they come back in. But I don't think I, think I can do that under principal's report. Okay, perfect. Review and approve board minutes of the September 28th meeting. Can I get a motion and then discussion if we have any? I'll make I'll a motion. I'll move to approve. Oh, I'll second. <laughs> okay, there's a motion been made and seconded to approve the board minutes for September 28th. Is there any discussion? I hear none. Lynn, do you see anything? <clears throat> okay. So motion has been made and seconded to approve the board minutes for September 28th meeting. And we're going to go down the line. Margo. Yes. Colin. Yes. Brenda. Yes. Priscilla. Yes. Who else we got? <clears throat> I think I've got everybody. Did I miss anybody? Okay. <clears throat> Feels like I did. Hey. Okay, motion is passed to approve the board minutes of September. 28th. Communication and public comments. I don't. I'm not, I'm I don't, not seeing any, Lynn. Nope, and I don't have anything on the chat. Okay. I don't believe there's any policies. <clears throat> I'm up to you, Chris. Principal's report, update on school reopening and update on HVAC. So um, the quick and dirty on the school reopening, I'm gonna spend um, probably a lot of this time on what we now know about winter sports. Um, but in terms of the academics, we continue to, as needed, bring students back to four days in person. We're up to 60 students. And again, just as a reminder to the board, our approach to that is as it becomes clear that students um, are struggling academically, particularly with remote learning, um, we set a priority for bringing those students back. And in almost every case, it definitely makes a difference in having them back. So I wanna emphasize for the board, um, that does not mean we are leaving everybody else high and dry. It means that um, if you are making it work, with the two days of in-person and the three days of remote, um, then we're gonna let you continue to make it work that way. And if it's not working for you, we're gonna explore why. And one of our, our go-to strategies to support those students is bring them back to um, four days of in-person instruction. Um, before I get onto the athletics, one other thing that I wanna make sure that the board is aware of, um, and, and sometimes this goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it. This is really hard to pull off and do well. And I really wanna commend our teachers for doing that. Um, but I can tell you it's wearing on folks and it's, it, it is a significantly different job teaching in this environment than it is teaching in the regular environment. And um, teachers will tell you, not in an adversarial or a, or a um, in an angry way, but they'll tell you, this is not really what I signed up for. 
And again, I want to say that not this is not a, this is not confrontational. This is just me keeping you folks in the loop. Um, that doesn't mean this isn't what I sign up for. I'm not showing up tomorrow. It's um, this is significantly different, and and it's it is difficult to endure and difficult to keep up. So. Um, Hopefully those scientists will come up with a vaccine sooner rather than later and, you know, we can move on from this. But I think it's important for the board to know um, it's, it's taken its toll, but, um, but students, I'm very impressed with how they've stepped up to the plate. I'm very impressed with how our staff have stepped up to the plate to do what we have to do with the, uh, the hand that we've been dealt. Um, having said that, let me talk to you a little bit about winter sports. Um, as of last Tuesday, um, the state declared that winter sports will be able to happen, or at least some of them will be able to happen. Um, as far as our school is concerned, um, we haven't done wrestling for a while, but wrestling isn't gonna be able to happen. We have done indoor track for quite some time, but indoor track is not going to happen. That is as much about facility availability as it is anything else. Um, so as far as our school is concerned, we're talking boys and girls basketball. So as I hit some of the highlights here, it's a six page document, winter sports programs for the 2021 school year put out by the um, Agency of Education and the Agency of Natural Resources. I'm not quite sure why that's part of this, but in any event, it is. Maybe it's for, for the schools that do skiing. So I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna read some of the highlighted items here for you. And they're only in a particular order because they come on the pages here. First of all, all players, coaches, officials, staff and spectators will be completing health checks before arriving at school sponsored practice sessions, scrimmages, games, meets or competitions. Um, that, that's to highlight the fact that there are going to continue to be these um, COVID-19 health expectations. Um, they do say early on here, should data emerge that indicate evidence of COVID-19 transmission resulting from interscholastic games, meets, or competitions, additional restrictions may become necessary, including but not limited to widespread cancellation of games, meets, and competition. So here's the timing of all this. We can start practices on November 30th. That's the Monday after we come back from Thanksgiving, but games won't happen until January 11th at the earliest. Um, and I have been told that a part of that decision was let's get it started. Let's see if within individual schools, that is within their own practices, we can um, avoid any possible COVID-19 issues. And once we've done that, it's about six weeks, then we'll start taking this show on the road, you might say. So. When will the games start, Chris? January? January 11th is the earliest that we can play at this point. Thank um, you. They have a number of their limitations health-wise, face coverings worn by all players, coaches, official staff, and spectators. Um, and they, uh, they make it a point to say this, understanding that team-based social events are often considered an integral component of school-sponsored sports programs and also that more frequent extended physical or close contact increases the risk of COVID-19 transmission. Team-based social gatherings are strongly discouraged until all other COVID-19 specific restrictions regulating school-based sports are fully lifted. And we will make that clear to our teams and our coaches as well. And Chris, just for clarity, I've heard there's no spectators. That, I was gonna to get to that. Yes, no spectators. So it's going to be very interesting in that it's going to be a super quiet gym. You will be able to hear a pin drop while the basketballs are bouncing. Um, let me go to that part of this. Spectators at indoor sport events. Consistent with, agency, with the Agency of Education's strong and healthy start guidance and to limit unnecessary exposure, only key personnel, which they define as players, coaches, officials, time and scorekeepers, and persons providing live stream video will be allowed to attend school sponsored events. We are actively working with Fax TV to provide the best possible live streaming coverage of our home events. Um, Jamie Dancero, our tech person was meeting with um, 
someone from Fact TV um, earlier today and going to the gym and just figuring out the right way to pull that off. I know that there are some folks who were interested, they've already expressed an interest in coming in and doing the videoing of games, but I feel very strongly that we're gonna leave it to the local experts, which is Fact TV. Um, and I think that they're gonna be able to probably do a better job than us just having someone stand there with a iPad and you know live streaming it on Facebook or anything like that. So that's our approach right now is that we're gonna go with um, Fact TV on that. Um, and that's the highlights of this six pages. Um, does anyone have any questions on that or anything related to um, the current um, state of the reopening of school? Priscilla? Uh, yes, um, I talked with several parents in the last few days and I know you're looking at the struggling students and looking at that. But I'm hoping that you're also asking parents because um, I've had several that have said to me that the, the classes that only meet the two days and then you do the, re the other two, they really feel those students are not getting a lot, the ones that I've talked with. And so I don't know whether you could open up some of those. The ones where you're doing the, the two days and then the teacher's doing virtual lessons and continuing the other days, I think they're in a different situation because at least they're getting instruction in all of those days. But those classes that just have the two days and then the teacher's repeating, I don't know whether you can open that up more to virtual um, on the other days so that those kids are getting more or whether you can maybe get some of those classes back in. Um, well, what I can tell you, Priscilla, is the way I, I track this, and I'm probably due for another survey on this, but um, my measuring stick is the teacher's assessment on how well the students are prog progressing on their the proficiencies with each class. And really the question that I have put to teachers is, um, are you tracking toward reasonable and successful mastery for the students of their proficiencies, which is how we define class success and getting credit and progress toward graduation. And by and large, and again, I, I, I don't have any specific classes to identify, but by and large, um, the, the responses are very strong and positive from the teachers on that. So um, I guess what I would say is um, if a parent feels individually that their student is struggling and needs some of that attention, um, they can certainly reach out to their guidance counselor and we'll give that consideration. I think there's some hesitation on doing that for some of them. And so that's, you know, they don't want to put their student in, make them feel like they're singling them out or something, but that's why I was just wondering whether maybe those classes could be looked at first as far as maybe opening up a little more and being a possibility of bringing some of those kids in that because you don't always know. Sometimes you think the kids are, are okay and the teachers think they're okay too and you find out, you know, but there's so much more you can do. Yeah. There's, there's no doubt. Stuff that and your teachers are working hard. I know they are. And I recognize that. And I know it's an awful situation. It is for all of us. But um, I didn't know whether, you know, down the road here, if you can start looking, maybe sure. thinking that direction a mm -hmm. little bit. Yep. The Chris, other thing I just... that you didn't answer was, um, did you get the check on the shipping back? Um, I haven't asked John on that. Um, I don't, Next I haven't time. seen it, but I can certainly check on that. I haven't, I haven't seen it, but good point to follow up on. So we'll take a note on that. Give them a call in the morning, see where that's at. Great. So I'd just like to make a comment on, on what Priscilla is talking about. I think that as a board member, the, the best advice we can give somebody is, and you know, they're not uncomfortable if they're talking about it on the street. They, they just need to send an email, even if an email gets sent to Chris and then he, you know, handles it. He knows these people fairly well to know which ones he can send the guidance and maybe which ones need a little more, you know, hand holding. But always have them reach out to the school. There's got to be somebody there they're comfortable with. So you just get the ball going if somebody really is struggling. Yeah. So, um, if 
there aren't any more questions. Update on the HVAC. Um, so um, momentarily, I guess I would say, we hit a little bit of a snag because we expected that we were going to be in on the, um, the air handling grant that um, some of the schools in our district have tapped into or are tapping into and many districts within the state have. Um, the misunderstanding was because it was a WNESU grant, we thought that it covered, you know, that we didn't have to do anything to get all of the schools covered. Um, and we came to find out that, um, that we at the high school weren't um, guaranteed of accessing that. So Chris wanted us to stop for a moment until we could come to the board to get authorization to spend the money that it's gonna take. But before we got there, what we recognized was the connection between this work and um, COVID-19 reopenings in general um, opened our eyes to a, a few other grant opportunities that would be able to pay for this. So once we realized that, we got the ball rolling again. So um, we have, um, just to give you a sense, let me read a couple of recent emails from Michael Sullivan from m &E Engineering. Um, so this as we were working out the, the financial details, in the hopes that there was still a chance, we continued to solicit competitive prices for the air balance and coil surveys. This was a, from last Wednesday, and I think we have them all in. Um, it looks like we'll have a cost about $9,550 for that work. I be, believe the balancers were about two weeks out, but I can confirm that today. Um, if there are any specific procurement or requ other requirements for the new grant source, please let me know. And then the next day, we have contacted um, Aerodyme, the balancer with the best quote and also the best schedule as of yesterday. They can be on site within three weeks. Please review the attached, which I did. They were expecting to take two to three days and anticipate needing one day on the main floor to check the capacity of the reheat coils and the balance of the time out of sight on the roof or mezzanines checking air flows. We are thinking they could be on the main floor on a Wednesday if that is still your schedule with no students on site. We anticipate being on site with them for a portion of the time. I have attached their proposal for your review and can provide a revised proposal showing the total cost. So there's gonna be about $9,000 of the engineering work and about $9,000 worth of the um, assessment of the air in the building, which are kind of two related projects, but done separately. Um, and that's a total cost of about $18,550. Um, and so we are in the process of, the takeaway from this is we have the financing back, um, moving in the right direction. Um, we have the engineering folks scheduling people to come on site and get the job done. And we're looking to expedite this just as quickly as we can. That's all the news that's fit to print up. Oh. Go ahead, Lynn. So um, the, uh, the, the Vermont, uh, the, the grant that we originally were looking at, the ones that the other schools took advantage of, that is still open till December 30th. And so we're working now trying to get that covered the way, the same way the school, the 9,500 covered the same way the other schools did for the proposed uh, work. And hopefully that will take, if it doesn't happen, we do have the, um, the ESSER funds, the CARE funds that will uh, we'll try and, and, and recoup some costs from that. But uh, we're, we're working on the original uh, grant funding source that uh, I believe it's still open till December 30th. And they've been responding to me. So hopefully we'll get the money. That's awesome. Colin? So are we, um, is this all grant monies or do we have something budgeted as well towards this operation? Um, we, don't, we haven't budgeted anything this, again, when we were building our budget last year, um, this need wasn't even on the horizon. Um, okay. But if so, if it isn't able to be grant funded, we would be coming back to you to get authorization to spend that level of money. But I, both Lynn and Chris have been saying they're hopeful that the grants will cover this. And not, not counting, okay. not counting this 9,500, 20,000 has already been spent in the, uh, at the school. Um, and so that is going in the ESSER care funds, 20,000 in equipment uh, and HVAC costs. 
So that 20,000 will be going in the ESSER grant and those that money I expect to get back. But those are from Foley, J&H Hardware, Home Depot, all the things that they needed to uh, get the facility up to, up to speed with uh, getting it ready to run this year. So this 9,500 we're hoping to get out of the energy um, efficiency grant. It will and Lynn, your grants, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I mean, would that cover most of the cost or would you have to come back to the board and say, look, you know, it only covered X, Y, Z? No. no? Uh, our okay. district was, uh, we've got a huge budget. It's $1.4 million just for COVID costs. We'll, we won't come that close. The, the difference is the work that we're trying to get from the, uh, the uh, energy grant is... Um, that, that's pretty much guaranteed because okay. it's by the state. Okay, cool. Thank you. Margo? Um, Chris, I just wanted to understand. So is the work that <clears throat> is being proposed to get done, um, engineering, design, as well as evaluation, but not actual construction so or changes start, to the it, so it starts with the evaluation end of it and that's a two-piece uh part of it they're bringing in someone to evaluate the air quality itself and the engineering folks so they're kind of subcontracting that part of it out but the engineering folks are going to come in and do a wholesale evaluation of the operation of our system okay. um from that there may be some recommendations in terms of some facility work or action to be taken on the system. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure I was yep. understanding that. Yep. If there's Any other else questions? Any other questions for Chris? Thank you, Chris. It looks like you're free to go here. Well, out let me here. talk about this, this, okay. um, this, um, interactive whiteboard bid. So let me just give you a little background on that. Oh, okay. um, we budgeted for four of these interactive whiteboards. Um, and as Ricky and Jamie Dancero were pursuing this, um, they um, came upon a couple of different vendors that have um, special rates going on in a buy two, get one th free. So the amount of money that we were budgeting for the four, we're gonna be able to get six of these. But the problem is, well, not a problem. I, the, the amount that we are gonna end up spending on this is more than 15,000. So it isn't as simple as us just saying, write up a purchase order and go buy these things. It has to go out to bid. Um, and it's a little strange and a little awkward because it's gonna go out to bid, but we really want the people who are bidding to take advantage of the buy two, get one th free. Um, but in any event, it is the process that we have to follow. So I am calling this to your attention that we are gonna go out to bid for um, six Promethean active panel titanium interactive whiteboards. Um, and again, there's not really action for the board to take, but I will read the, the, the bid specs themselves. And I'm just gonna hold this up here. It's like multiple pages of the fine print on what these things do and should look like. So that honestly, I don't think would have um, be useful for me to share with you. If you want those, I am more than happy to share those with you. But the bid is going to sound something like this: The Bellows Falls Union High School is accepting competitive sealed bids that will lead to the purchase of six 75-inch 4K Promethean active panel titanium interactive whiteboards for classroom use. We will accept and consider bids for equivalent equipment. In other words, what those are are proprietary specific panels, um, pieces of equipment, but we'll accept bid and consider bids for equivalent equipment if such alternatives meet and exceed the capabilities and specifications of the 75 inch 4K Promethium active panel titanium interactive whiteboards for classroom use. Um, the competitive bid, the most competitive bid will also need to include delivery with lift service and a minimum of a five year warranty on each board. So. Um, I'm using this opportunity to just make you aware that we're going out for bid on those. These are things that are budgeted. If we play our cards right, we can get six of these things for the amount that we budgeted for. Um, but we'll know that after we get those bids back in. 
Any questions on any of that? All right, so here I am saving the best for last. Not one, but two, count them, two more banners to go up in the Holland Gymnasium. We got two more state champions, you know, 2020, take that. You know, you can pick us, but you can't leave us down. Um, so our field hockey team won the Division I state championship with an undefeated season, um, shortened season that it was. Um, and... Um, we are graduating one senior from that team. So more good things to come down the road. Um, and who else, who else won that? Uh, oh yeah, girls cross country won the state championship as well. Um, and again, for those girls, that was the division three championship. Not only did they win the division one, excuse me, the division three state champion, but Abby Broadley came in first in that state race three times out of three. So she's going into her senior year next year. We're looking for four out of four, but um, not only that, there was not a New England meet. And typically there is a New England meet, but that got um, canceled due to COVID. So Vermont organized a meet of champions where all of the championship teams and the top 60 runners, male and female, got to compete against each other. And doggone it if Abby Brawley didn't win that race too. So not only is she the fastest in division three, She's the fastest in the state of Vermont. So um, we've got a lot of good things going on. And so. Um, no, Terry. What's that, Mr. Broadley? I said, go Terriers. You got it. That, on that note, I will end my principal's report. Thank you. <clears throat> Finance, I see maybe Flora is with us. Laura, do you have anything to report? Hello. Hello. I'm sorry. Uh, my computer was giving me trouble there. You're right. up if you got something. Um, no. Um, currently, we're just working on budget with all the principals for the next year. Um, Friday, we have our first auditor coming in and we should be able to finish um, auditing by December 13th. So we just working really hard to gather all the information that the auditors just sent us and putting our list together. Okay, anybody have any questions for Flora? Boy, they're easy on you tonight, Flora. <laughs> I don't have a lot, I do have a lot <laughs> between audits and budget, but that's all for us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. There's no committee reports. I do not see Mr. Clark tonight. So we do not have a WNESU report. Any unfinished business? All right, new business for discussion. Financial support for the booster club through donated funds. Chris, so, that's all you. Yep, and you may or may not recall because we've done a lot of crazy things since this happened, but earlier this year in the pre-COVID time, the school board accepted a, a, a $2,500 donation from Winben Charities. Um, we've, done, we've been getting donations from them for the past few years. Um, and it was donated to our athletic program but our athletic program, at least for this year, has been significantly cut back. Um, however, um, with the start of this year, the booster club, which typically makes a lot of money off of fall sports concessions, particularly football games and winter sports concessions, particularly basketball games, they're not gonna make any money off of any of those um, this year. Um, there aren't even gonna be fans at basketball games. So, um, the board accepted that donation. The donation was specifically intended for the athletic program. And I am going to ask the board to authorize us to um, give that money to the booster club um, to support their support of our students 
knowing that they will not have um, much in the way of fundraising or their typical fundraising here this year. And so it would be to apply the donated funds, the $2,500 from Win Bend Charities um, and give that to the Booster Club. Colin. I'll move that motion, Molly. Can I get a second? Margo, thank you. So we have a motion on the floor and seconded to give the win, Ben. Yep. Um, Charity's $2,500 donation. To the Booster Club to support, support our kids. That's what they yeah. do. And support their lost fundraising for this year. Is there any discussion? Okay, so yes, Margo. So um, it sounds like because they were clear, the Win Bend charities were clear in what they were giving the money for, that it's for athletics. That's right. That they probably would be okay with us shifting it. I, but, yeah. you know, it, it's always a good idea to check in with donors to make sure that they're okay like sure. so even if we approve it we want to make sure that they're okay with it sure too. i will say this and I, and I think that is absolutely appropriate um but um i will acknowledge and, and i'm not saying this in any adversarial com or or confrontational way that once money is donated to the schools it then becomes discretionary to be used as deemed fit by the by the school. Um, now, granted, you want to make sure that you use donated money in ways that meet the the desires of the people providing it, or they won't provide you money anymore. Um, so, I think that you could pass this motion, and I can go back to the person who wrote the check and just let them know that this is our plan. But there's nothing that prohibits us from. Oh. taking this action and i wasn't suggesting that i was okay. just as a good for you know protocols it's just you. a nice thing to do for donors sure. to yep. perpetuate in the future yep. and keep them in the loop gotcha will do colin you're next and then priscilla um as the maker of the motion i just i uh, this we're still under discussion obviously um and thank you, Molly. Um, Chris, are we sure that the anonymous donor wants this specifically to go to the Booster Club? No, they I wanted to go past, to athletics. I know in the, they very specific, they, they said athletics. Okay. And I okay. Think, think that this is, I, I feel this is, a, this is a perfectly fine connection and use okay. of that money with okay. that I intent just in make mind. Sure Okay, because I know specifically in the past, like you did say, they were, it was going, donations were going towards mm -hmm. athletics, such as, you know, you know, new bench or new right, fence right. or new scoreboard or what have you. Right. Um, I just want to make sure specifically that, you know, so, and I trust your judgments, so. Thanks. Okay, thanks. So on. Um, I just wanted to make the point that the Booster Club is uh, supporting athletics, and that's clearly... Um, and an area where it, you can simply say this is going to athletics because mm -hmm. that's what they're doing. It is a support thing, but it, as a courtesy, it's nice to go back and say, you know, we donated, we voted to donate it to the um, Booster Club who supports the athletics so that they could sure. um, be in charge of that and be able to spread it out over the different, different um, athletic programs. Yep. I can't imagine they would object in any way. Right. Any other discussion? So there is a motion that has been made and seconded to support giving the charity money from Winbend to the Booster Club. Chris is going to check just to make sure that they're okay with that. And I think we're ready for the vote. Margo? Yes. Priscilla? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Colin? Yes. And Molly's a yes. 
motion passes. There is no executive session this evening. Uh, director's comments, Margo. I'm all set for this evening, thanks. Priscilla? Just again, great. So our two teams that are champions should be very proud, and certainly from the board. Congratulate them. We'll do. Thanks. Brenda? I'm all set, thanks. Colin? Just uh, Mr. Hudson, uh, please pass on to your uh, faculty and staff that, you know, we, you know, in the community and as boards, uh, we do understand the, um, you know, the difficulty that they're facing every day. And I know it's a challenge. So just pass that along that, you know, we're at least I am in support of all the hard work they're doing. Great. Thanks, Colin. Yeah, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the smoothest, quickest meeting we've had in a long time. My God, Molly, <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> meeting is adjourned.